Shadow. I felt a hoof slap me, followed by Stardust saying quietly, Damn it, Shadow, wake up. Now's not the time for you to be in La La Land. I jerked my head up and looked around. We were in a small space with metal walls and what looked like mops and cleaning supplies. It took a moment, but Stardust's face came into view. What the fuck happened? I asked, rubbing my sore head. I feel like a stallion used my head for a bucking bag. He cursed. I have no fucking clue. One minute you were riding on my back as we were flying towards the new moon. The next minute you passed out and fell off my back. You're lucky I was able to catch you. I remembered the memories from Night Stalker hitting me like a lead balloon. It wasn't the first time, but unlike the others, the memories I saw weren't fading away. It was odd. I was able to use his memories to train myself with the power armor just fine, and nothing happened when I did that. The memories themselves faded, but the skills stayed. The only other time I passed out like that was right after the crystal spoke to me. Except the memory I saw then also vanished. What was going on? Shadow, we don't have time for you to stare off into space like that. What the fuck happened? Stardust asked, shaking me a little. It's nothing. Where are we? I asked, getting to my hooves. Shadow, that wasn't nothing. Your fucking eyes were glowing green when I caught you. You were mumbling about foals and assassins. What did you do? Is it Aquila? Are you messing with magic you can't control? He asked, looking more pissed the longer I avoided his question. Dusty, I can't even begin to tell you what's going on. I don't even understand it all. Just, please, let it go and tell me where we are. I said, doing my best to keep calm. He cursed under his breath, then said, Fine, but you will explain this to me when we're all safe, and so is Stratus. We made it to the new moon. Dad is up ahead, hiding with some of the soldiers who followed us. How many Pegasi are guarding the ship? I asked, pulling out Dreamwalker, just in case we were attacked. That's the weird thing. We haven't seen a single guard yet. My dad wanted us to keep hidden just in case it's a trap. We also needed to wake you. I couldn't just leave you passed out in a closet with glowing green eyes. He said with a cocky grin. Would have been kind of a dick move, you know. Could have been fun to prop you up in a mock bucket or something, though. I rolled my eyes. Well, I'm up now and ready to fight. So let's get this ship taken offline and see if we can find my father, Thundercracker, and Solstice. Now, let's get out of the closet. His grin only got wider. I thought you came out of the closet a long time ago. Oh, ha ha! It's your turn this time. I'm just here for moral support, I said as I opened the door slowly, looking out for any guards. Ha, <laughs> you're mean. I'm telling Aura you're making assumptions about my sexuality, he teased as he followed me out. Go ahead. She's worse, I replied as we made our way down the hallway that looked like it was just off of a large hangar. I'm only teasing, damn, he said. I have no idea why Stormy thought you would have been the perfect soldier. You talk too much, I said as I saw Cascade and a few soldiers up ahead. <laughs> That's right. This is not why I'm perfect. Just awesome. And good looking, he said, then waved at his father. Hey, Pops, what's the hold up? I decided to ignore my friend as Cascade turned towards us and noticed his weapons weren't even activated. What's wrong? I asked. No ponies here, Cascade said, looking over at me. Had the guards go check out the area while you were napping, and they couldn't find a single pony anywhere on the ship. That's impossible, I said. Who's attacking the city if no ponies here? It's gotta be some pony in the bridge. At least two. Takes that many to fly one of these things. But more likely three or more, Cascade said. Something's fishy. I agree, Stardust said. Shadow, stay behind me and my dad. The rest of you go check out the ship again and make sure there really isn't any pony around. We can't afford to be ambushed. We don't take orders from you, a young stallion said. 
You'll do as you're told, Private. This is my colt, and he's got more fighting experience than a lot of you. Now move, before I give you all an ass whooping, you candy ass. Because Gade said. It took a moment, but they all finally nodded and started spreading out across the new moon. Once they were gone, Cascade looked at me and said, I haven't seen my daughter or your dad yet. I'm hoping they're at the bridge trying to stop this thing from destroying all of Stratus. Let's go find out, I said as I followed them as they made their way to the front of the ship. It was kind of creepy to be on a ship this large and not have any other pony in sight. The new moon was many times larger than the palisade that had been, and that ship had dozens of ponies running it. How could this thing be flying and shooting at the same time and not have a single pony aboard? Although, with no pony around, it also made it a lot quicker to reach the large blast doors that had the words bridge over it. We all readied our weapons and prepared to attack any pony who came for us when the speaker on the wall crackled, nearly making me shoot them. Then the ghoulish voice of Thunder Lane echoed out of them. It's about time you made it here. Come on, you three, we've been waiting. Oh, and you can put your weapons away. No pony's going to attack you, he said, followed by the large doors opening to reveal a large flight deck or something with at least two dozen seats around it and monitors and terminals all over. My jaw dropped open as I saw the sight that really captured my attention. In front of the bridge... Just in front of the large windows that showed the devastation the new moon was unleashing upon Stratus was a pink barrier with a terminal screen showing the dark outline of who had to be Thunderlane, and standing next to it was Captain Strife with a smug grin on her face. Below her, just outside the barrier, was Dad, Solstice, and Greed, who were all looking up at her. A deep chuckle emanated from the speakers again, at the same time as the door slammed shut behind us, and Thunderlane said, Welcome, Courier. Or do you prefer Shadowstar? We haven't had much time to talk in the past, so I figured that we could all meet up here and have a little chat. Grandfather, just please let me kill her, Strife said in her icy voice. In time, my princess. In time. Now be a good filly and let Grandpa talk to the little pony, he said in a creepy voice. <sighs> yes, sir, Strife said before she glared down at me and sat next to the large monitor. Who are you? Cascade yelled. I'd like to know that too, my dad said. Cascade, you'll be quiet or I'll make you be quiet. I was only talking to Shadow, Thunderlane said. I'll make you be quiet. When I find where you're hiding, you coward, and shove my hoof so far up your ass. Cascade started to yell, then a blast of electricity shot out of the darkness in one corner, hitting Cascade right in the face. He made an odd squeaking sound as he fell over, his eyes only half open. Dad! Both Solstice and Stardust yelled at the same time. Don't worry, he's not dead. But he will be out for a little while. Now the next pony who speaks that isn't our guest of honor will die. Underlane said, chuckling again. Now, Shadow, do come closer to the barrier. I want to get a good look at you. Stop firing on Stratus and then we can talk, I said, not moving an inch. I won't have more ponies dying just so you can pretend like you have more power than you do. Fine, fine. I do know how much you like to pretend like you're the hero, so I'll comply. For now, he said, then turned to Strife. Go on, stand by, princess. Yes, grandfather, she said before pushing a button on the terminal next to her. The ship came to a stop, and so did the cannons. Once they were done, Thunderlane said, Now then, please come closer. Don't, Shadow. It's a trick, Stardust said. I know, but I don't have much of a choice, I said before walking past my father. Greed and Solstice to stand right in front of the pink barrier. Okay, so what do you want and why did you attack Stratus? 
Right to business, I see. I like that about you, Shadow. I really do, he said. Shut up and get to the point, you sorry excuse for a rotting corpse, I said. Now that's just rude, and you don't know a thing about me, Shadow, Thunderlane said. I know who you are, Thunderlane. And the only way you can still be alive after 200 years is if you're a ghoul, which I find a little funny since the Enclave has a shoot-on-sight order for all ghouls, I said. We do, though that was Night Stalker's doing not my own. Honestly, I've never had a problem with ghouls while he was still running things. Yeah, some of them are true monsters, but... A lot of them are just ponies who found a way to immortality, kind of. However, I'm no ghoul, at least not in the same way that you know them, he said. You sure sound like a ghoul to me, Thunderlane. And why else would you be hiding your face in shadows? You don't want too many ponies in the Enclave to know what you are, that's why, I said. He chuckled louder, and to my surprise... A light started to slowly illuminate his figure, and what I was looking at made no sense to me. What well, sat on the throne was a stallion in his fifties, with a dark gray coat and a slightly saggy, icy blue and white mane with yellowish eyes. He looked just like the Thunderlane I saw in Greta's memory, but where his eyes should have been white, they were black, and his coat had a wavy complexion to it. It was like he was part ghoul, but also part pony, who just looked sick. What are you? I asked. When he spoke, his voice still sounded like a ghoul's, but not as raspy as others. I am the one of the few ponies who s survived exposure to the pink cloud. Unlike most ponies who were stuck in Cantalot or went there in years later to explore the old ruins... I didn't become a full Canterlot ghoul, thanks to a friend of mine who saved me when Greta was left for dead. So you are a ghoul? I asked. Yes and no, he said, getting off his throne and turning a little so I could see one of his wings was fused to his side, while the other was able to lift away from his body. Near the back side of his body, his coat was more patchy and dead-looking. You see, when I was attacked by Greta, she tried to kill me for what I did to her lover, Night Stalker. She would have finished the job, too, if I hadn't told her that I set a trap for my old friend in the Crystal Empire. She knocked me out and threw me towards the castle in Canterlot, leaving me for dead. My exposure to the Pink Cloud nearly killed me. But instead, I started to change into a ghoul. I was saved by my friend, and taken back to the Enclave in secret. For many years, I stayed hidden, letting every pony think I had died, and I ran the Enclave from the shadows. The doctors figured I would die someday due to the toxic nature of the Pink Cloud, but instead I just stopped aging, and I kept on living. I'm maimed, to be sure, but my mind is still clear. And my power is absolute. I've spent the past 160 years making sure that my family stayed strong and Night Stalkers stayed weak, while I worked towards finally activating Falling Shadows. A goal that is finally close at hoof, thanks to your mother and you. You're crazy, Thunderlane, my father yelled. Shut up, Night Stalker. You're lucky I haven't killed you already for the crap that you've put me through over the last ten years. Thunderlane yelled before looking back at me. I've been waiting for you, Shadow. A pony like you to finally be born. When I can help me to finish my lifelong quest. I'm not helping you with anything, Dick Breath. I said. Watch your mouth. Strife hissed. Quiet down, princess. I can deal with a little name-calling, he said sweetly to her before saying to me, Shadow, I 
know that you aren't ready to help me. I didn't expect you to. In time, however, you will. I know nothing I can say will convince you of that. It's because you don't know the whole truth yet. Once you find it and see what Night Stalker was really up to, along with Manette, you'll see that I'm not the bad pony here. I'm the one who will finally bring true peace to this land. With falling shadows? You don't even know what you unleashed upon Equus when you activated it, I said. Oh, I know more than any of you. Trust me on that. It's you that doesn't understand what my master can truly do to this world. As I said, you won't understand until you learn everything. So, under the circumstances, I'm going to make a deal with you, he said. A deal? I asked. Why would I make deals with you? It's in both of our interests, Underlane said with a smile. He's full of shit, my father growled. I assure you, I am not, he said. Now, Shadow, you've already helped me in more ways than one, even though you may not have seen it yet. For that, I've decided to let you live and your family and friends. Well, what's left of that, that is? I've never done anything for you, I said, doing my best to hold back the anger. Oh, but you have. You see, thanks to you and your mother keeping Aquila locked up inside your head for so long, she's no longer a threat to my master. The more she lets her anger fuel her, the further from the light she gets. And when my master finally escapes his cage, she won't be able to do what she was sent here to do. He said. If she was a threat to your so-called master, who I'm guessing is Mezzanote, then why did the Children of the Night bring her down in the first place? I asked. Oh, you won't get all the secrets to why she was created just yet. But I'll give you a hint. We needed light magic to help unlock the cage, but that's all I'm saying. Now let's get back to the deal he said in a happy tone. I'll pull all of Navarro's soldiers back, give up Nimbus, Stratus, the Crystal Empire, and the Twin Cities for now. I'll even call off the attack on New Pegasus. If you do two things for me, Shadow. Sorry, make that three things. I rolled my eyes. What's that? First of all, I want you to keep doing what you've been doing. Keep trying to find a way to unlock Falling Shadows. I know you'll need to if you want to put a stop to it. Leave the rest of the Enclave alone for a while so I can deal with the shit going on back east. And last of all, show me. You are really the descendant of my three friends. He said. Okay, now I was more confused. What are you talking about? Which part? He asked, cocking his head to one side. All of it. But let's start with the second thing. Why do you care if I do anything to the Enclave? Honestly, I never really get a shit about any of you until your grandson started trying to kill me, I said. Yes, that was a mistake on my part and a few other ponies. You see, we didn't know who you were back then, only that you had what we needed. I gave you my word that you won't have any problems with the Enclave for a few months at least if you just step back. I'm even giving you a few of my cities. Oh, and this part of the deal goes for any Enclave member who runs the cities from here on out. The reason I'm doing this is because I have two other pain-in-the-ass stable dwellers to deal with back east right now. Unlike you, they have no idea who really runs the Enclave. If I don't start putting in efforts to stop them, then it will set my plans back years. So this treaty is both good for you and for me, and I'm giving up a lot to do this. 
he said, looking a little more pissed as he said it. Fine, and the first part? Why do you want me to keep trying to stop falling shadows? <sighs> That's my secret, and I'm not telling you. If you think you can just outsmart me and really stop the project, then fine. Go try it. We'll have to see who wins in the end. My biggest reason is more to keep Aquila distracted. Thunderlane said. I thought you two were partners, Stardust said, stepping to my right side. She's just a tool. She's always been. She doesn't like me. I don't like her. She thinks I'm working with her because she wants to use me to get her full power from falling shadows. That body Grim helped her get won't be able to deal with it, though. The only th way she'll have harnessed her full power is if she is still within your full body. I just need her to get the project going, then I'll just destroy herself, and as she tries to get more power, and watch as she dies a painful death, he said, a slight chuckle escaping his lips. So you're just going to kill her in the end, which will kill me too? I asked. Maybe, maybe not. If I understand the spell correctly, if either of you kills yourselves, it won't affect the other. I can't be sure, so if you want to survive, then you should probably find a way to break the spell your mother put on the two of you, he said. What if I just tell her what you're planning? I asked. She wouldn't believe you anyway. She doesn't trust any pony, not even me. But when it comes to you, everything you say will just be a lie to her. Now, do we have a deal? Or do you want to see how many of you I can kill before I ask again? He said. I sighed. What about the last part? I thought you already knew who I was. I've heard too many lies about your death over the last few years. And with your mother working with the Ministry, I can't be sure she didn't just make a new version of her daughter. Aquila could have stayed connected with a synth after all, for all I know. I need proof that you are the real star, he said. Walk through the barrier in front of you and use the biometric scanner just below me, and the new moon will stop its attack on Stratus. I'm pretty sure the barrier with a bypass spell on it can be tricked by a synth. They're powerful, but not perfect, I said. That's true, but the bypass spell on it can be tricked by a synth. Uh, this bypass spell on the shield is just to prove that you share genetic code with Minette. The biometric scanner, however, is a lot more advanced than the bypass spell is. Since share 99.9% .9 of the DNA with the pony they were copied from. However, there's a small chip within their brains that makes sure the body works properly. They may look, feel, and bleed like a normal pony, but they're still artificial. The scanner knows the slight difference. And we'll know you are a true-born pony. It's coded only to work with the descendants of Night Stalker. So your father or your uncle could shut down this thunderhead, but they can't pass through the barrier. If you can do it, you both, then I'll trust that you're really the daughter of Nightshade and Grimoire, Thunderlane said. I glared up at Thunderlane, then over to Strife, before taking a few steps to the pink barrier and stepping through it. When I was on the other side, I put myself close to a small blue gem just under the monitor and let it scan over me. It took a moment, then a mare's voice said, DNA genetic match found. General Night Stalker, many durations descended. Name match to Enclave database. Last known name, Star. Only child of High Counselor Nightshade, 41 years old. Status, alive. Also, only daughter of Grimoire Spell. Forty years old, status deceased. Only known relatives, still known to be alive. Cloud Striker, forty-seven years old, uncle on father's side. Fallen Star, sixty-four years old, 
grandmother on mother's side. Orikalos, forty-four years old, uncle on mother's side. Welcome, Star. Your information has not been updated in twelve years, three months, and seventeen days. Please provide any changes to name, if it has been changed, and state what you would like to do with the new moon thunderhead. I was a little baffled at all the information that the computer on this thing seemed to know about me and my family. But then I grinned up as Thunderlane as I said, New name Shadowstar. My first order will be to stop all aggression on Stratus, bring down the barrier around the controls here, and kill Captain Strife. My smile only got wider as the barrier around us went down and the large guns in the room pointed at Strife. I'll agree to your deal, Thunderlane. I'm afraid that you won't be getting your great-great-whatever-granddaughter back. The bitch is going to die. I looked, a Strife looked a little scared as the guns started to hum with energy in them as they started to warm up. Grandpa, what do I do? Thunderlane rolled his eyes. If you kill my granddaughter, there'll be no deal. I will make sure to kill everyone you love, starting with your griffin lover. My eyes went wide, and I said, Computer, or whatever you are, hold off in killing strife. The gun stopped humming, and Thunderlane said, Good. Now let her leave. Give me one reason why I shouldn't kill her, or at least take her prisoner to make sure you hold up your end of the deal. Kill her. If you do, I won't. Solstice said. I looked back at her, saying, Solstice, not now. She huffed, but kept her mouth shut as Thunderlane said, I'm a pony who keeps my word, but as an incentive to let my granddaughter live, I'll tell you one more thing. A scientist in Thunderhead, back east, found a cure for killing Joke. Let her leave, and I'll transmit the recipe to your Mark II. I also won't launch one of my new mega spells at Freedom. You're full of shit, I said. I agree, my father said. Finally, I saw true impatience on Thunderlane's face as he said, Test me, then. Kill her, and see if I'm really bluffing. Even if I'm lying about the mega spell, which I'm not, would you really let the griffin you love stay as a pony? You know that body will only get her killed one day. Grandfather, are you really going to let her get away with one of our most powerful ships and kill me? Captain Strife yelled. Shut up! Thunderlane yelled. I knew it was right. I just hated to admit it. I truly didn't care if Aura stayed a pony or not. I loved her no matter what. But Aura wasn't trained to fight like she was. She would never truly be happy as a pony, even if she was really cute the way she was right now. I knew that we would have to fight more sooner than later, and she wasn't the kind of griffin to just stay out of the fight, even if it did get her killed. Fairy Glitter told me about the cure, too, and she said she could get it. There was also a possibility that she wouldn't be able to get the cure, either. When it came to Aura, I couldn't risk a maybe. So I sighed again and said, She can go, but you better keep your end of the deal. I will, Thunderlane said, before saying to Strife. Strife, meet me back here as soon as you can. Also, pull all of our troops out of the western cities. But, Grandfather, she started to complain. Do as you're told before I decide to do to you what I did to your brother, Thunderlane yelled. She let her head hang before shooting me a nasty glare then walked past me to head down the steps towards a door she could exit through. As she passed, I stopped for a second, whispering to me, You may have made a deal with Grandfather, but mark my words, you'll still die. I don't care what he wants with you or that demon bitch Aquila. The sins will still find you, and they will kill you. Trust me on that, she said as she kept going. When she was close to a door, I said, Computer, get her off my ship. Yes, Shadowstar, the computer's voice said, before the door next to her opened and one of the guns fired near her hooves. 
blasting strife out of the new moon. Thunderlane growled and yelled, I told you not to attack! I interrupted him. I didn't kill her, just wanted to put her in her place. She's fine. You only said not to kill her, and I didn't. Now, give me what you promised and get your ugly face off my screen. The glare he gave me could have melted steel, but he just looked away and hit a few buttons on his terminal. A moment later, my pit buck dinged, showing a message was sent to it. Once that was done, he said, There you go. Now keep your end of the deal and we won't have problems for a while. Trust me, in time we'll talk again. And you will help me. Goodbye, Shadow Star, and let the best child of the night win. Then his image was gone. I let out a sigh of relief, then ran down to my father and hugged him tight. Then reached over, pulling Stardust into the hug too. I can't believe it's over. Dad and Stardust hugged me back, before my dad pulled away, saying, It's not over yet, but at least we'll have time to fix and rebuild. I have a lot of work ahead of me if I want to stop him. I just can't believe that Thunderlane is really alive and running the Enclave. I can't believe he made that crazy deal and let us keep the new moon, Solstice said. This is like one of the best ships they have. Dad laughed too. It is one of the best, but it's also nearly impossible for any of the Enclave to use fully. I looked over to my dad and asked, What do you mean? They were using it to destroy the city. Yes, but they hacked into the system and ran it remotely. It's something that can't be done easily, and it would have only lasted for an hour or so before the new moon would have updated its security system and kicked them out. Though in an hour, this thing can do a lot of damage. The only ponies who can truly control the new moon is my family, my dad said. So this was Night Stalker's ship, then? I asked. It was towards the end of the war, when it became his flagship, when he was taking over all the cloud cities while he was the pony running the Enclave. When he left, his sons took over, and later it was docked in Navarro for a long time, and kept out of our family's reach to make sure none of us could take power again. My dad said. Then he looked over at the large window of the destruction of Stratus. I followed his gaze and saw a lot of power-armored ponies were leaving the city, or what was left of it. Stratus was no longer a beautiful city. It almost looked like most cities in the wasteland now. I sighed and pulled Dad close. The wasteland finds its way into every part of Equus, even up here. Sorry I couldn't do more to stop this from happening. No, my dad said. I saw tears starting to fall from his eyes. I wish I could have put a stop to everything before I got myself captured. It's not your fault, my old friend, I heard Cascade say from the spot where he'd been knocked out. I looked over, seeing he was getting back to his hooves with the help of Solstice. If I'd listened to you a few months back, maybe we could have done more, and I just didn't want to get involved. It was my mistake. Dad smiled a little. And then, as soon as it appeared, he was frowning again. It's not your fault, Cascade. From what I can tell, Thunder Lane's still planning something for a long time. Dad. Mom. I said, trying to bring up the hard subject of her death. Because I just now realized he didn't know yet. He looked back at me, then stopped me. I know. Winter Frost told me. How did he find out? I asked. The Enclave has access to all the MAS EBS towers all over the wasteland. They saw the fight with you and Aquila and recorded it. He showed me your mother's death and taunted me about it while he was letting me rot in the cell. He said as fresh tears fell from his face. I just wish I could have spoken with her one more time before she left the world. She left you a message. I recorded it on my Mark II. I said, feeling my own tears starting to fall. Let's go somewhere private and we can talk. I'll play it for you. Dad looked around, then shook his head. Another time. Right now, there's a lot to do. And if I know you and your friends, I'm sure there's a lot you need to do, too. 
I need some time to process her death and mourn in my own way. Once everything settles down, I'll come to you. We can spend some time talking about her, and you can play your final words. Okay, Dad, I said with a sigh. Then checked the message on my Mark II. I could see that it was a couple of recipes of some kind. I'd have to show it to Aura or a doctor or a zebra to figure out what it was. If it worked, then Aura could get back to her being her amazing self again. The day hadn't gone as well as I'd hoped, but honestly, it was a complete nightmare. But at least my dad was alive, and maybe, just maybe, I really could outsmart Thunder Lane and Aquila. I noticed it for a little while now, but I wasn't the same mare I was when Aquila was trapped inside me. I was finding out that I was a lot stronger and harder than the scared filly who lived in Stable 28. The longer I was free of Aquila, the more I noticed that I was turning into Night Stalker in a way. I still wasn't sure if it was a good thing or a bad thing. So I just sighed and continued, saying, We do have a lot of work to do. Damn right we do, Cascade said. I'll give that jackass back for knocking me out. Good to see you uh, worked your way up, as always, Cascade. Because as my first act of being reinstated as leader of Stratus... To promote you to general, I'm going to need your help and fairy glitters if we're going to defend ourselves from the Enclave. Dad said as he walked up to the biometric scanner. Sorry, Shadow, but I'll have to take control of the new moon and get her ready to protect the city. I have a lot more work to do. Wait a sec, I'm retired. I don't want to be a damn general, Cascade said. Too late. I don't trust many ponies, General Cascade. But I do trust you and your family. Now stop complaining and get back to the city. Start organizing our soldiers to help the citizens, Dad said. Cascade looked ready to explode with rage for a moment. Then he let out a long sigh and said, Fine. But what do you mean the Enclave? I know that Navarro pulled away from us, but the Enclave started here in Stratus. We are the Enclave. Dad looked back as Cascade and said, no, it didn't. It was a lie to make Stratus feel good about itself. Honestly, all Stratus is, is the cloud section of former Lost Pegasus. It was named Stratus before the war and was home of Night Stalker when he was a cult. When he declared the Enclave was a new nation, he was in Navarro. That's why they've always held so much power. From here on out, Stratus, Nimbus, the Twin Cities, and the Crystal Empire or no longer be the Grand Pegasus Enclave. It will be known as New Equestria. If any citizen isn't happy with that and wants to stay part of the Enclave, then they're banished from our lands and everything they own to be left behind to aid the repairs of Stratus. Now go, my friend, and make sure every pony knows that my first two orders are. I'll check in with you tonight. Cascade grumbled. Fine, but you owe me some wild Pegasus. Dad smiled. I'll bring the good stuff. You better, he said as he looked to Stardust and Solstice. You two should come with me. I'm going to need a lot of help, and my two children are perfect. Sorry, Dad, but I'm going back to the Wasteland with Shadow, Solstice said. Yeah, me too. Also, I've never lived above the clouds like this, and it's just a little too much. I'm a mayor I need to make sure to help, too, Stardust said. Ah, does my big bro have a little crush on a bat pony? Solstice teased. Stardust blushed for a moment, then said, So what if I do? She's awesome and cute. Cascade looked ready to argue, but sighed again. You two are too much like your mother. Fine, but you better be safe down there. We will be, Solstice said, walking over to hug her father. Tell mommy I love her. Same for me. Stardust said, also hugging his dad. It was nice to see that he was getting used to being close to them, even if he only found out last night. Yeah, I will, Cascade said, then glared at me. Keep my kids out of trouble or I'll kick your ass. With that, he flew out the open door and down towards Stratus. Dad came over to me and asked, So where are you off to next? 
Before, I wouldn't have told him because I knew that they might try and stop me. Stardust's plan was to still in motion and every pony had to do their part, even me. I couldn't just let my own plans be stopped, but after today, I saw that I had to start putting more faith in my friends and my family. I'm going to Spitfire's Flight Academy. Wait a minute, that wasn't part of the plan, Stardust said. I know, but I have to get there before Aquila moves the thing she hid there while she was controlling my body, I said. What are you talking about? Dad asked. The only thing there is the power source for falling shadows. I grinned. Yeah, and she hid a small gem that has part of her power inside of it. You see, she's not really the key to falling shadows. Minette stored a part of the light magic that made her in a gem. That's the true key that Thunderlane and Aquila need. If I take it, then we can really put a wrench in their plans. Are you sure? Dad asked. I smiled. I'm positive. Stardust sighed, then said, Okay, then we'll need to be there first before heading back to freedom. We should have just enough time to stop there before we have to put a stop to the sins and everything else going on there. No, Solstice can drop me off, but then she needs to go to New Pegasus, and so do you, Dusty. We can't waste any more time than we have to. I'll be fine at Spitfire's Flat Academy. I'll get what I need and make my way to New Pegasus to meet you. I'm also going to get the cure for Wind Thrasher while I'm there, too. I'm sure Dr. Gauze is finished with it by now. And even if he hasn't, I'm sure that he has uh, can help can help Stormy figure something out. Fairy Glitter said something about that last night, I said. I don't really like the idea of leaving you alone, Stardust said. Bro, she'll be fine. Shadow's one of the strongest ponies I've ever met. She'll be okay, Solstice said before giving me a hoof bump. I agree, Dad said, smiling. I have faith in you all. Now you should get going. We'll catch up later. Also, thank you for saving me. Hey, what about me? What am I gonna do? Thundercracker said. I'd almost forgotten he was aboard. He hadn't said a word the whole time. Oh, sorry, Thundercracker. Kind of forgot you were here. No, I wasn't. I was looking around the ship while you were talking with Nasty Face. So, what do you need the old greed to do? He said with a huge smile. Help my dad with Stratus, I said. Hey, that's not fun. I want to go back to the service and do something more. Maybe steal some shit, or find myself a hot mare and kill the sins. You know, fun shit, he said. I don't think it's a good idea for a greed to stay in Stratus right now. Later, I'm going to try and get Dashites brought back to the fold. Right now, it's not a good time, Dad said. I sighed, and then said, I guess you can come with me then. That way Solstice and Stardust can go back to freedom quicker? He smiled wider. Awesome. Just a quest for you and me. This is gonna be fun. I was already regretting this. But if you're going to take an overly egotistical Pegasus with you, you might as well be one that also worked with a flying personal shield. So I just laughed and said, Yeah, let's go fuck some shit up. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Overwhelming will. Most ponies in the wasteland lack this perk. Where most ponies would fall or submit to the harsh reality of the wasteland, you have more willpower than most. Due to this perk, you'll no longer be intimidated by overwhelming odds and more powerful ponies. When situations look tough, you won't run. You'll kick your enemy in the balls and laugh. 